Let me thank Access for inviting me. Pleasure to be here and to have listened to Joschka Fischer. Um, I think Europe needs more Joschka Fischers for the future because we need politicians who dare to speak up and be creative and original. And I think we heard much of that this morning. I must confess that when I uh, started to prepare myself for this um, event, I had to Google up the term liberal internationalism. Um, because I wasn't sure if this was the same as liberal interventionism, which was the term used at the beginning of the millennium, when we were all confident that the European Union could uh, step in together with the United States of America. We were led by Tony Blair and Jacques Chirac. We were building up a European uh, security and defense policy. But uh, the definition I was given by Google says liberal internationalism argues that liberal states should intervene, and I underline the word intervene, in other sovereign states in order to pursue liberal objectives. This can include military uh, invasion, it's a pity they used the word invasion, should have been intervention, and humanitarian aid. So then I thought, what are the liberal objectives that we are talking about? Well, clearly, as we heard from Joschka, it's about democracy, it's about the rule of law and good governance. But is it the same as humanitarian interventionism, and are we going to see uh, Europe regain the self-confidence that it had um, only uh, 10, 50 years ago? Let's turn for a moment to the environment in which we are living. The threats and challenges, ladies and gentlemen, that we are facing at this moment are now of a different order. They are directly affecting our societies. This is different from, say, 20, 15 years ago. And I think that this new reality also determines the, uh, the chances of a return of, or, or the chances of a return towards uh, liberal uh, internationalism or interventionism. Uh, from my experience, and I'm, an, I'm, a, I'm a practitioner, I know that the room is full of academicians, but I'm a practitioner, and forgive me for being uh, a little bit practical on certain things. The challenge involves um, the, the, the sources of conflict that we are uh, seeing at this moment. They are bad governance, stupidities by politicians in, in different parts of the world, organized crime, corruption. Um, it's not about conflicts between states, but it is more and more the resurgence of tensions between ethnic and religious communities, which puts at risk certain weak states. They are at risk of falling apart. Nationalism is, of course, uh, now in the upswing, Joschka has mentioned this. Putin is one of our uh, uh, threats or challenges, whatever you may call it. Why? Because President Putin, like Milosevic 20 years ago, had the ambition to speak in name of the Russians, whether they were living within Russia or outside Russia. Milosevic was doing the same with the Serbs. He was speaking for the Serbs in Serbia, and those who happened to live in Croatia or Bosnia-Herzegovina. So, at this moment, I see a, a, um, a world where, on one hand, we have values and principles to defend, and on the other hand, the old thinking of um, territorial conflict, plus religious fanaticism and violence, leading to terrorism, and to mass migration. I just came back from Ukraine, where I spoke with various uh, negotiators, players, uh, members of parliament, 
both from Kiev and from the Donbas, the eastern part of the country. What struck me, ladies and gentlemen, was that whereas on the ground we see slow but positive progress towards solving the, pro the, 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 the conflict, under the leadership of the OSCE, the parties are now withdrawing their heavy weapons, and uh, there is a little bit more confidence coming back to the area. But the weakness is that the people in Kiev, in the parliament, are so fed up with the leadership and the corruption in the country, and they are so ill-informed ill -informed about what's going on, that I have a serious concern that whatever is agreed in terms of decentralization, autonomy, changing the constitution for that purpose, will not be meeting with full support and that the president and the government will fail in their attempts to um, incorporate the requirements of the Minsk uh, process in their national legislation. So that's analysis, ladies and gentlemen. Now let's, for a moment, if I may, I will be quick because otherwise liberal uh, chairmanship will uh, stop me from <laughs> continuing. Um, the question now is, where and when and for what purpose should we intervene in international affairs? And my contention is, again, that the pendulum seems to swing back from overconfident liberal humanitarian interventionism towards greater caution. And if we look at Syria, what happened two and a half years ago, when uh, a proposal by the President of the United States and the Prime Minister of the UK to intervene with military force in the uh, hopeless humanitarian tragedy of uh, Syria was not supported by the Parliament. This was inaction, and we now see what happens, and we now pay the price for that. A new refugee crisis, mass migration, is now the consequence. This morning, our dear uh, prominent uh, daily had the headline, Deutschland kraakt, which means Germany is struggling. And uh, this is exactly what I said. The threat is now coming at our doorstep. There are three considerations, in my view, that come to play when considering military intervention. The one is political will. Do our leaders have the necessary political will? Uh, Joschka was answering this question to somebody in the audience. And I'm an optimist too, but I must say that I have a bit of doubt about the current political leadership in Europe to stand up, speak out, and defend the need to intervene, if necessary, with hard power. I think Joschka did this in 1999, like uh, a number of other politicians, but I, I have a concern that the political leadership and the elite have lost the habit of courage when uh, the need comes. In addition, the European Union now has 28 member states. There is a lot of uh, difference of view about foreign policy, and this again leads to inaction. The second point that comes to mind when we have to intervene is the legal justification. Um, of course, like the European Union has said manifold, the best legal base is a resolution of the United Nations Security Council. But I would still maintain, as a liberal interventionist, that if necessary, and if the Council is blocked and doesn't come together with an unreasonable permanent member who is not responding to our uh, basic values, like the responsibility to protect, then another legal base has to be found. We need to, we cannot remain passive only because Russia or another permanent member is blocking a uh, proposal or a decision in the Security Council. This is what happened in Kosovo. Putin has been a master in manipulating our, uh, the narrative of Kosovo. We tend to forget when NATO intervened in 1999, 
Putin says it was because we wanted to wrestle Kosovo out of the sovereignty of Serbia. This was not the case. It was a human rights intervention. We wanted to stop the, uh, the uh, blatant violation of uh, human rights of the Kosovo people and the op stop the oppression by Milosevic's forces. Finally, capabilities. I do not agree with my friend Roger. Our friendship is fresh, but nevertheless, we <laughs> now already seem to disagree on certain points. I'm much more with uh, Herr Fischer. I think that hard power is important. But there are problems. Our budgets are going down. Um, NATO has to balance a return to Article 5, the, co the, the collective defense of its territory, with the continued need to support United Nations peacekeeping in third countries. And the EU, dear friends, is weak in that it has not managed to give practical content to what is called the comprehensive approach. It has many instruments, military, civilian, trade, i.e. sanctions, and um, um, uh, uh, trade, but it cannot use these instruments in a coherent fashion as much as it, uh, as it would be necessary in order to make its actions um, co um, effective and, and to, to create a real impact. In addition, I believe that what we need is more, a stronger role of civil society, why not also of the um, uh, free uh, market economy, and finally mediation. Um, I think there's a, a lot more to be done through mediation. Take, for instance, the refugee uh, chain of where people come from. We are addressing the, re the refugee crisis at the far downstream end at the reception here in Europe. We are also looking at smuggling halfway over the, mid the Mediterranean but more effort should be put into upstream efforts to uh, stem the, the problem uh, at the source. Thank you, John. Thank you. Thank you very much.